Hey, everybody, there's a couple of people we want to thank for supporting us at patreon.com slash comic book club this month. Kicking it off with Aaron C. Hollis. Aaron Howarth. Adam Marks. Adrian Moreland. <laughs> Amanda Harris. Uh, Amy Gonzalez. Benjamin Brown. Brett Macris. Chelsea Mack. Clemens Solur. Close enough. Demand Ryan. Dan Snow. Danny Heck. Danny Ali. Dennis Scott. Eduardo Martinez. Aaron Dorian. Jeffrey Risher. Gerard DeVier. Hugo Sanchez. Jason Williams. Jessica Ashcraft. Joe Crack. John George. Jonathan Jong. Joseph Kelly. Joshua W. Broxon. Kaylin Swift. Karen Comstock. Catherine Anderson. Uh, Kendall Wilson. Kevin Kleinrock. Kieran Broderick. Lee Brown. Luana Thomas. Lucas Sink. Mark Carrillo. Mark Kiefer. Mark Zeller. Megan Thigpen. Michael Sturgeon. Mike Diorgini. Mike Dargetio. Mitchell you. McDonald. Uh, Nick Broughton. Oh, you got it this time. Nick Grayson. Omnia Soul Art. Perry Taliaferro. Pip Pete 2020. Primetime Pauly G. Rahadian Sestrardio. Rahadian Sestrardio. That was actually pretty close. Uh, Tamela Rush. The 12 Banch. Tiago Nascimento. Victor Perez. W. Blaine. Wally D. Liberman. Librarian. Librarian. <laughs> Will Buchanan. <laughs> Zika's Viral Comics. Want to th- say thank you all very much. We really appreciate it. Sorry for birching your names. Enjoy the show. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming out to Comic Book Club Live. Please give it up for your hosts, Alex and Pete. What is up, everybody? Welcome to Comic Book Club. I'm Alex. I am Pete. And that's our man in the booth, Booth Man Prime. Booth Man Prime. Welcome back from Thanksgiving, everybody. I know it's been many, many days since Thanksgiving, but that's the last time we've seen all of you yeah. here in this lovely audience. Pete, how was your Thanksgiving? Oh, it was glorious, man. Deep fried uh, two two turkeys. I put on an eating display. It was glorious. And I, you, uh, No, I'm sorry. What? What is an eating display? Well, it's when you uh, eat two eat, deep fried turkeys in front of everybody. Well, no, you you sh- you know you just you eat a ridiculous amount of food. You just you know that's just called Thanksgiving. What, well, sure. Did sure you do is. something special beyond that? No, but I saw you like, were at a hall or like an evilly long table of <laughs> decadence. Oh where yeah, you I was had, at the Legion of Doom. Yeah, it looked like it. Very nice. The pictures that you shared, it yeah, looked the like the universe it. is tipping towards doom, and so is Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> no. I was at a uh, I was at a very fancy Thanksgiving. Yeah. Uh, Did was, you have to wear a black tie to that event? No, it, it was mostly very chill. But it was in this three level. I don't even know what you call it. Uh, space in Tribeca. So it was. People Is this were, like a secret society that you belong to, or like? I had to do some fucked up shit I can't talk about. <laughs> but uh, no, it was very nice. The, the weirdest thing to me about it actually was that. I think it was the first time I was at what a real Thanksgiving is like, or at least what Thanksgiving is like in the TV and movies. Really? Which there was a, I don't know, just in terms of the dishes were all very nice Mm -hmm. and all very traditional Thanksgiving dishes. And everybody kept talking about like, ooh, what's in that? What'd you make that with? Which usually most of my Thanksgivings are like, nom, 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 nom. all right, let's go out to a movie. We're done now. Wow. You and go out even, to a movie? Yeah, we go out to a movie. We're Jewish. <laughs> We're used to big meals. <laughs> uh, but yeah, okay. there's even a guy who was like, oh, I'm going to cut the turkey now. Everybody watch me cut the turkey. Oh, and it was wow. a whole event and everything. Is that wow. a thing that happens at uh we, 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 nobody's like, hey, uh, watch me cut the turkey. But, no, uh, like, you know, it's a well, the big event, event though, was uh, there was a new episode of The Mandalorian. Oh, Friday. man. There Did you was. watch that? Oh, yeah. How you doing? You, you were you were saying you're a little worried about Baby Yoda. I am very worried about Baby Yoda because I'm way too fucking attached to Baby Yoda for me to deal yeah. with. And I'm worried about The Mandalorian and what he's going to do because he's like, He's got a soft spot, but he's also cold as ice. And, like, I don't know if, uh, you know, if fucking Baby Yoda dies, I am not going to be all right. Well, if there's one thing I know about Disney, it's that they're probably going to fucking murder a kid. <laughs> yep. <laughs> they do. <laughs> what? Every movie. Every movie they do that. No, Baby Yoda's going to be fine. I will say uh, the other thing. So I've been watching it with my kids. Mm-hmm. At every episode, I feel like I'm living with Twitter. I have a, an almost 10-year-old daughter and a uh, 5-year-old son. 
And my daughter, as soon as Baby Yoda will come on the screen, and this is every episode so far, is like, oh, Baby Yoda. And my son's like, oh, he's not Baby Yoda. Nice. Come on. That is Twitter. Like, calm down. Yeah. Asshole. Wow. <laughs> wow. Did you just call your son an asshole? If he's, he's being five. An, if he's being an asshole, I'm going to wow. call him an asshole. Man, I hope your family listens back to these episodes. <laughs> You've been an awful father. Dad, I, I was listening to your podcast yeah, and my therapist early, says, December 2nd, <laughs> 2019. Uh, what the fuck were you doing <laughs> yeah. with your life? Yeah. Very. Here's one thing that we're doing with their life is having amazing guests on the show. Yeah. And we're going to be talking about some amazing stuff this episode. She is the community manager for Cereal Box, which we're about to talk about quite a bit. Rachel Pedales! Welcome to the show! Hello. Yeah! Strutting out with a giant hammer. Yes! Yeah! She's worthy. She's worthy, folks. Uh, Rachel, grab your mic. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I put know, down we, your we hammer, grab the mic. Yeah, yeah, there you go. I was prepared for it, but I didn't know where it was going to go. Yeah, it's fine. We like to hide it somewhere around yes. the theater for everybody. Uh, so the reason you brought out Mjolnir here yes. is because Serial Box is launching a new show yeah. uh, called Thor Metal Gods. Metal Gods, yeah. Metal Gods, which we'll get to in a second, but I think first it's probably worth explaining what Serial Box is. Thank you for asking. So <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> Serial Box, we like to call it the HBO of reading, but it's also like the Netflix of audio. Audio were serialized Ooh. fiction. Oh. Um, so uh, it's. Wait, what is it the Disney Plus of? Oh, that's a good question. We'll circle back to that one. But right <laughs> okay. now, I mean, that's it could be smart. the Disney Plus of sci fi and oh, fantasy okay. Ooh, because nice. that's a lot of our um, series and authors and titles and content is very in the sci fi and fantasy and mystery universe. So there's a little bit of something for everyone. We even have historical drama. Um, but it's a synced audio and ebook series um, in episodes that vary from 30 to 45 minutes of length. Um, so like your favorite podcast, but it's all fiction, hence Serial Box. Uh, and uh, there were a couple a of pun. original properties, but you started to lean into licensed properties. There's, yes. uh, I, I don't know if there's other ones now, but I know there's the Flash Rogues. You're doing the Orphan Black Oh, sequel, yeah, Orphan Black launched. Awesome. In, it's really great. If you haven't listened to it, it's the official continuation of the series, and it's actually narrated by Tatiana Maslany herself. Uh, wow. So she's vocally doing everything. She's narrating it, and she's playing all your favorite clone club members, as well as some new clones, Ooh. American clones, Oh, and then some. All right. I, I feel kind of bad. I haven't gotten to it because I realized the cereal box thing came out. I was like, oh, cool. I got to check that out. Oh, shit, I'd never watch, like, the last two episodes of Orphan Black. You were maybe, like, the 300th person that has told me that, which is... <laughs> Comforting, but also it's encur you know it's yeah. encouraging. This kind of like okay, so finish it up on Prime, and then <laughs> right. and then download Serial Box. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Uh, but you are launching with Marvel Thor Metal Gods, yeah, which is next very exciting. Thursday. Uh, so talk us through that. What's the idea of Thor Metal so Gods? So the idea of Thor Metal Gods is um, it's a spacefaring adventure. Thor and Loki team up, as they always do, but um, it's across time and space. The series opens with Loki in a metal band called Heavy Whispers, which is maybe the best name for a band. <laughs> Heavy Whispers. Heavy Whispers um, in London, 1989. And wow. uh, there's some backstage drama, but it, you know, backstage drama with a rock star and an Asgardian trickster god. So, you know, there's maybe some ancient magical evil runes. And then we flash forward to the present and uh, Thor and Loki have to team up with uh, a Korean demigoddess that can take the form of a tiger named Ooh. Harangi and uh, a space pirate named Zia. Ooh, so, nice. yeah, it's really exciting. It's really bonkers. Uh, it, it, I, that is as most as I can give you without spoiling it. Well, one other thing that you can say, though, is it's narrated by Daniel <laughs> Gillis. Yes, from... I mean, we didn't even get to the creative team yet. So yeah. the creative team is really cool. All of Serial Box series are written much like a TV show in a writer's room style. Um, and so there's a lead writer and then um, three to four that round up the rest of the team. And the team on Thor Metal Gods is really cool. We have Aaron Stewart on, who did Mandy, um, Brian Keane, uh, Jay Edidin, 
who many people may know from Jay and Miles Talk the X-Men, and then Yoon Ha Lee, who's an incredible sci-fi writer. So nice. it's a really incredible team, and it's narrated by Daniel Gillies. Yeah. Um, who, um, if you don't know who he is, he was on uh, Vampire Diaries. He was also one of the main characters on the originals. Uh, yeah. He has a very good voice. An incredible voice. Yes. Uh, with a nice Kiwi accent. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, since this is Metal Gods and since there is musical elements to it, are there songs in it as well? That is a complicated question. Um, Ooh, there is... <laughs> There, there, are, there we are, stopped her. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. Um, uh, there are compositions, uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and there's also a K-pop element. Aaron Stewart on is actually a really big fan of. I am gonna probably embarrass myself. I don't know how to pronounce the band's name. EXO. Okay. They, I, I don't know why you're of, looking at me. <laughs> they're so because you're really good at the internet and you know what's popular. Oh, so. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, you know what? I'm glad we're talking about this. You're good at the internet. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You no, know I, I the agree. internet right. and yes. things that are on it. Yeah, I, I like a lot of your Google. tweets. Oh, thank you. Aww. thank you. Genuinely, please, please and don't, with don't give the... them too big of a head, please. No, no, let's keep going. This no, is no, a this conversational. Is, oh topic. my god. Wait, <laughs> you weren't a fan of when he like tweeted every day, like May the you know oh, that was June hilarious. the fourteenth be with that you. That was oh, that was you. so annoying. You had, Pete, this, you're out. Uh, Rachel, you're in. Thank right. you. This is this is this is a, a co- you know a comedic theater. You have to commit to a bit. Ooh. It was a, it was committing She's to a right. bit. You overcommitted. Respect. <laughs> you should know I mean, when to that's quit. That's nothing new for me. <laughs> uh, so let, let's talk Wait, about I, I would like walk. to say a little bit about the music. Like the fact that Loki is in a metal band is all you needed to say for to get me to check this out. That sounds amazing. I am so happy that that excites you. I yeah. also There's also... Um, a uh, poster that we made for the uh, for his band. So. Oh, uh, yeah! So I, we'll, I definitely we'll, have to see that. that we'll be showing amazing. it off soon. Yeah. yeah now, as amazing. you have Daniel Gillies narrating it, is is it him the entire time with sound effects? Are there various yes. voices? How does it go? So he's narrating the entire series, but he's doing the voice of the narration. He's doing the voices of all the characters, and we have incredible sound design within the series, so it's enhanced. So um, I think we have a couple of clips. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, if our let me, powers... Let me give, bear with me for a moment, and I will... Uh, Boothman will get this working. Okay. okay. All right. So, Just uh, give us an announcement when you are ready to go. In the meantime, let's talk about what does a community manager do? What doesn't a community manager Ooh, do? Yeah, that sounds like all-encompassing. Also, I get to spend some time on the internet, so I know how good you are on the oh, internet. Because you, yes. I, Please, I, can we stop <laughs> complimenting <laughs> this gotta, guy? Every five minutes, we have to come back to this. That doesn't seem <laughs> right. So part of being the community manager also is uh, audience growth and development is part of my purview, which is you know why I'm spending time on the internet and finding where our fans and our audience is. Cool. Which happens to be on the internet. All right. Because we are a streaming service. Yeah. Right. Uh, and I don't know how much you can talk about this, but you do have other projects coming up, yes. right? Yes. Um, uh, the titles are public knowledge of which characters we're doing. We also, in, so uh, Thor is the first of our series with Marvel. And uh, so that starts next week, December 12th. And then in 2020, we have Black Widow. Uh, Jessica Jones and Black Panther. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 That's Um, awesome. And we confirmed the subtitles of all of them. And I'm just, I'm sitting on really awesome information. I can tell. (laughs) You're beaming. Yes. It's exciting. Uh, Do we have this ready to go now, Boothman, or... Yes, we do. All right, let's uh, let's play the trailer so people can check it out. Cool. Whosoever holds this hammer, if he be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor. So this is the crown's doing. Do you believe me now? I never doubted you. What do we do? Rush the stage. My kind of thinking. Thor hefted Mjolnir. You have my hammer. Then he saw the runes, the ones that said, To Thor, our champion. Orangi was right, he thought bleakly. This 
is my fault. Pre-order Thor Metal Gods today on the Serial Box app. She said it's a it's big a, it's week. It's a big week for trailers. Yeah, it really is <laughs> yeah, a big week for trailers. Um, all right. So who does the music for that then? Our head of audio. Oh, uh, okay. Amanda Rose Smith. She's incredible. She's done. Uh, so she does the sound design and compositions for a lot of our series. Uh, she also worked on um, the Walking Dead game. So oh, wow. has incredible experience. Um, and the theme and music that's within the series. So that's why I said there's compositions um, uh, for Metal Gods is really exciting. Cool. Uh, now, totally separate thing, but I, I know you were excited to talk about this, so I'm just going to throw it out there. Having nothing to do with Serial Box, uh, we've been doing a Watchmen podcast on the mm-hmm. show. It's called yeah. Watchmen Watch. It's been rolling out twice a week. You've been super stoked about Watchmen, right? So stoked about it. In fact, on the train right over here, I saw a woman on the train reading the graphic novel. Oh, wow. And I, I wanted to engage her in conversation, but I didn't want to miss my stop <laughs> yeah. and miss the show because yeah. that would have been bad. Yeah. But mm. um, uh, I just, I recently got back onto Reddit to just lurk the subreddit to read <laughs> theories. Um, I don't want to spoil people, but I, I definitely got into a very in-depth discussion today about theories of parentage of one of the characters. Sure. So can I be vague or can we... Uh, I don't know if everybody... Is everybody <laughs> here watching? Are they caught up on the show at all? No? No. Okay, I don't no. want to spoil that. <laughs> right, I don't, so we it's, spoil it's, 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 We can it's, talk it's, about it off yeah, uh, microphone. Yeah. Uh, I'll throw out something that Pete threw out to me before the show. Oh, uh, here we go. <laughs> 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 uh, was I was like, hey, Pete, what do you think? I think I know the answer to this. Which is better, watch from the comic or watch from the TV show? Fully expecting one answer when the answer actually was... I really love the TV show. I've been so blown away by the TV show that, to me, it's, it's kind of taken the place. I know one came first, so obviously, but I've just been so which impressed... One? <laughs> uh, I've just been so impressed with the choices that they've made with the TV show. Uh, and it's, since it is updated, it's a little uh, less stressful to watch. So, like, I, <laughs> I, I've just been... In s- fact, I would venture that you're not watching the comic book at all. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. <laughs> uh, but don't tell me how I read things. Um, <laughs> if you Audiobooks flip the pages, is, is reading. Data. What? Audiobooks are also reading. Oh, that's it's, it's a controversial opinion, um, mm. but I stand by it because it's the way that your brain is activated. So oh, technically, it's reading. So read however you want. Oh, nice. Thank you. You're Agreed. Uh, <laughs> what do you think? Comic or TV show, or they're both fine? They're both great. Yeah. I mean, I appreciate the reverence to the source material, and yeah. that was it was really exciting to see someone reading it openly on the train. I always love seeing comics in the wild. Oh, but yeah. um, like Pete said, the, the show is just doing things that the comic at the time was ahead of its time. Um, and th- this show is just, I, I didn't know a show could be capable of what the show is doing. Yeah, yeah. it's stunning what's going yeah. on. I feel like uh, I was talking about some, with this with somebody on Twitter that I feel like the thing that's holding me back is we haven't seen the final episode yet. Right. So I don't know how it's going to wrap up. So I don't want to be like, this is the best TV show of all time. We don't want a true dead. Uh, true dead. I was thinking of Walking Dead and True Detective. We don't right. want a True Detective season one. Right. Because I, similar to the subreddits, where now I'm just so thirsty for theories that I have to stock the subreddits. I remember how exciting all the theories were about how everything was going to wrap up for Two Detective Season yeah. 1. And then... Nothing. The Yellow King. He's a yeah. huge uh, god yeah. type. And then, Demon. Nope. And then no, it was just stick. maybe Matthew McConaughey hallucinated <laughs> yeah. and hit his head and roll credits. But I... So I'm a late convert to Damon Lindelof. Mm. Um, and... Uh, uh, the leftovers was pretty incredible. Yeah. So I, I don't know if it's misguided, but I have faith that I think as blown away that we've been so far with these seven episodes. Yeah, seven episodes. Mm-hmm. I think the, I'm I'm afraid of what's going to happen to the characters because right. it's Watchmen. It's yeah. 
not happy. Right. Um, no. So not I'm not Watchmen a, babies. No. <laughs> uh, that was, that that which is on Disney Plus. Yes. <laughs> technically, <laughs> technically is on Disney Plus now, which is hilarious. Yeah. Um, uh, so I'm afraid for the characters because I care about them, uh, but I am not afraid that we will be narratively dissatisfied. Yeah. I think so, yeah. too. I, I feel confident in how they're potentially going to end the show. For anybody who isn't watching it out there, highly recommend watching oh, it, man, just because, yeah. like we're saying, it is doing things on TV that I have never seen done yeah. on TV before. Yeah. Uh, it, it's fantastic. Uh, also, it's great if you watch it, because then you're more likely to listen to our podcast, <laughs> which is good for us. Yes. <laughs> Way to sneak that in, bro. No problem. Seamless. Watch, watch. Now on iTunes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, cool. Uh, Serial Box, Thor Metal Gods comes out on next Thursday. Next Thursday. Next Thursday. And uh, install new episodes every Thursday thereafter. All right. Very cool. All right. Yeah. Uh, we are going to move on to our next section, which is my favorite section, because you all make it up. It's your audience questions. Uh, all right, let me go out to you. And if you have a question, either for our amazing guest or for Pete, but not for me because I'm not taking questions tonight from anybody, uh, just raise your hand and you'll get some free comics. I see one over here from Mr. Otter. What's going on with the Otter, Kevin? Um, my question is about uh, the comparison between comic books and... Uh, and audio as a medium. You, you're not going to address the fact that you have an otter <laughs> on your lap. So anyway. <laughs> uh, you know, did, did I miss something? <laughs> okay. Particularly when dealing with, you know, these characters, mm. um, what are some of the challenges, you know, with the translation from, you know, comics to, you know, the audio medium? So what's interesting is obviously it's a lot more descriptive <laughs> because you're reliant on the prose and the sound design to create the picture for you that you would otherwise see on the comic page. But what's, it's, I think, as immersive as a comic can be because um, comics, it's your imagination is an unlimited budget and that element is the listener and the reader with, within the serial. So um, yeah, the, the, the prose is incredibly important to that in, in creating that picture. Cool. Great question. Uh, Yes. Pete. Would you like a uh, book, or we also have pins? Yeah, we like also. And this is a weird coincidence. We have a small pile of otter food <laughs> over here to give away. I'll uh, take a book. You take, <laughs> take a book. Okay, I'm just gonna take a book. Good choice. Uh, do we have any other questions? Anybody else in the audience? Uh, you, sir, saw your hand here. I can actually. I think this is long enough today to come around to you. What's your name? What's your question? Name Caesar. And hey, Caesar. Yes. Um, I had a question all prepared, but now you just throw me off because you're talking about audiobooks and I'm thinking, so how much of an influence or inspiration you get from, say, the golden age of radio? And a really big inspiration from that. Um, audio dramas are, have, yeah, uh, that I, I'm kind of stumped because it's, uh, we're following that tradition. Um, and uh, I think what's really cool about Serial Box is that it's taking all of the modern trappings of what can be done now with audiobooks and podcasting and streaming and all that uh, technology and doing something that is really a timeless practice of episodic fiction that audio dramas were known for. And, you know, there was a Batman serial in the 40s and um, every other character that a lot of comic pick characters took inspiration from in the golden age had serials themselves. Uh, Sherlock Holmes had a serial oh, yeah. and he's arguably considered the first character to have a comic book death because he died and then he came back. Uh, and then, you know, uh, the Flash Gordon serials and, um, and that was sci-fi and fantasy and uh, a lot of that is what Serial Box does. Cool. Is there any plan, are there any plans to go backwards in a way to either release scripts or comic books or anything like that? 
backwards within the content of the store in terms yeah, of the I mean, like time setting? Yeah, Metal Gods and say, hey, we're going to do a co- comic book adaptation of it. Uh, th- there could be if people are really into the storyline, but okay. Serial Box would be presenting it. We wouldn't be producing it. Okay. So, um, yeah. But if Marvel wants to do a comic version of our audio book, that would be great. Yeah. yeah. It would definitely not have as much noise to it. Uh, Sadly. You have a question. Sadly. Wait, wait. I just want to ask these real quick. Did you want a pin or a comic, sir? Or again, we have a small pile of otter food. <laughs> you don't have an otter. Okay. What would you prefer? Pin or a book? You'll take a book. Okay. Okay. There we go. Uh, it's just one singular push pin, by the way, just uh, for anybody else who's <laughs> asking questions. Uh, you, sir, you have a question. What's your name? My name is Pablo. Hey, Pablo. Hello, Alex. Hello, Pete. Hello. Um, I know she has a name, yes. Hello, Rachel. Hello. Nice mirror, by the way. Thank you. It's very light. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, can you fly and... And, and pop up electricity out of it? Uh, sometimes, when I wind it up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my question is, have you guys seen the Black Widow trailer? Yeah. And Ooh. your thoughts? Ooh, thoughts and... Uh, uh, that was going to be a short question if it was just, have you seen the trailer? Um, <laughs> thank you for the follow-up. Pablo, uh, do you want a pin or a book? He, he would also like a book. Okay, so we just have a pin left at this point. Uh, so let's talk about the Black Widow trailer. Has everybody seen it at this point? What is going on here? <laughs> what is happening? Uh, Rachel, have you seen the Black Widow trailer? I have a yeah. few times now. Yeah, yeah. what'd you yes. think? I thought it was great. I'm excited. I'm nervous. I'm not as confident in this narrative as I am in the uh, finale of Watchmen that I haven't seen yet. But I'm nervous that um, I just hope that the story isn't. So, in the trailer, kind of spoilers, you see. A, char- a new character wearing some clothes that could be... I ne- think we could talk about it. Right, okay, so, so Yelena, who is technically Black Widow 2, who is Black Widow's sister, Natasha's sister, so you see her in what appears to be the um, Quantum Realm outfit, or at least part of it. Yeah. So I am just hoping, or and that's the conjecture, I'm just, I don't want this to be some kind of like weird pocket universe story. I hope it's, you know actually part of the main timeline. Yeah. As of far, the main MCU timeline for Black Widow's story. As far as I understand it, I believe this takes place after Civil War, kind of when everybody is either in prison or off doing their own thing. Uh, so it is yeah. an in-between adventure. I think the consistency of um, Scarlett Johansson's hair color in the trailer yeah. is helpful because if you remember Endgame, there was like four different hair colors yeah. and styles and lengths. So Yeah. What's, but, your, t- yeah. Oh, what's your take on it, Pete? Uh, I'm excited. Uh, this is definitely uh, something that people have wanted, so I'm glad that she's got her own movie. Uh, she's one, one of my favorite characters, and uh, she has a ton of amazing uh, comics that hopefully they're pulling from for this. I'm ex- very excited about the villains in this. Um, I just hope the storyline is good because sometimes if they put too many villains, then you're spending too much time away from the main character. But uh, Marvel has been doing such a great job with its storytelling that I'm sure it's not going to be an issue. But uh, yeah, I, I've watched the trailer a couple of times now and a lot of great moments. I We talked about this. We do a Week in Geek podcast for our Patreon. We do. Yes, patreon.com slash comic book club. Also, <laughs> check out Alex on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just search. If you go to internet.com and put yeah. my name in there, yeah. I think it's and, the first And result. please uh, let me know if anybody unfollows Alex after that, because that would make me very happy. <laughs> oh, man, Pete. I'm going to unfollow you on Twitter. <laughs> oh. oh, no. I'd never do that. Then I'd miss the tweet that you said every couple of weeks being like, at real Kevin Conroy, great job. Yep. <laughs> Hey, man, that guy's amazing. I mean, it's a, it's a good tweet. I can't lie. Yeah. Uh, but we were talking about this a little bit, that it feels like it, I would have been I'm psyched for it. I would have been more psyched for it like five years ago. Yeah. You know, definitely for a variety of reasons. One reason being after, after ScarJo went on multiple promotional tours being like, 
Woody Allen is great. I support Woody Allen, where I'm just like, oh, I'm not looking forward to the promotional tour on this one. That's not going to be good. Uh, and Makes I hope the they case don't for say, ensemble cast. Yeah. I also hope they don't say that in the movie at any point. The Black Widow <laughs> turns to the screen but, and is like, by the way, Woody Allen, great guy. <laughs> anyway, back to uh, Taskmaster. But yeah, the, the casting is phenomenal, though. Like uh, Florence Pugh. Yeah. 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 David Harper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Big fan. Yes. Rachel Weisz. Yeah. I mean, come on. Who else is in the cast? David group? Harper is now coming for fandom. Hellboy, yeah. uh-huh. Stranger Things, now he's in the MCU. Yeah, he's great. He's so great that when Pete and I were talking earlier, he thought we met him one time and we haven't. <laughs> Come on, dude. <laughs> we might have. I don't. I re- <laughs> Justin's not here, so we don't know. I could be right. <laughs> Pete and I are having a little bit of a Mandela effect thing going on. We were, uh, we mentioned this a couple of times on the show, but we were on a Comic Con cruise. And <laughs> while we were on. I was a- drinking a lot. So. <laughs> while we were on the Comic Con cruise, we did a a live reading of the first issue of Charles Soule's Curse Words huh. uh, with a bunch of other folks who were on the cruise. Uh, there was a Stranger Things panel on the cruise. I'm forgetting his actual real name, but two of the cast members from Stranger Things, uh, the guy who plays the science teacher and the lady who plays the sort of almost silent badass assassin from season one, were both on there. But I don't think David Harbour was there. <laughs> I think he was. <laughs> Okay. In my mind, he was. We'll find out later, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Black Widow looks pretty good. We're all going to see it anyway, right? Yeah. 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 Okay, there we go. Uh, we can take one more question, and you're either going to get some pins or some otter food. Oh, uh, you, sir. Casual hand there. in the back guy. Uh, now, I want to specify, I did clarify that there were no questions specifically for me. No, I'm kidding. You can come <laughs> up. This is Nat. He told me he was going to come to the show and ask some questions. Oh, yeah. Uh, Alex, I was just wondering uh, just if you have any like dating advice or uh, no, um, uh, I yeah, here we go. <laughs> Bring it on. Cool. Let's reference a Twitter bit. Um, Alex is on the Internet. <laughs> uh, I'm so no, sorry. I had a question about cereal box, actually. No, I, I was curious because um, in sort of adapting superhero stories, typically we've seen them in comic books or occasionally novelizations, but often, you know, film, television. Uh, they're very visual. There's a lot of action. I was curious about the challenges of adapting that kind of action-based storytelling for uh, an audio format, and also if there are anything, uh, any strengths that you think the audio format brings to that kind of storytelling that's not in the more visual forms. I think it brings a lot of strengths to it, because what, for me, and also in classic Thor comic fashion, is the sound effects. Um, and having the epic sound design that we have in our Serial Box series, that's something that Pew could only go so far on the comic book page, but what we do within the serial is something that is totally immersive, totally new, totally brings you into the story, so I think, if anything, it's, it's a strength. Uh, I feel like I'm asking the same question I asked earlier, but from a different direction. Are there any thoughts about syndicating these shows on, say, traditional radio or something like a Sirius or something like that? Yes, and that would be great. Okay, great. <laughs> I'm not offering. Yeah, no, no. But if you know someone, <laughs> okay. let me know. You control the internet, so you can make <laughs> it happen. happen. <laughs> I'll, I'll check with my bosses. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Internet. Uh, I think we could uh, take one more question if anybody has anything. No? No? Do you want to explain that otter? Please. <laughs> it's driving me fucking crazy. Kevin? Nope. Okay. <laughs> he's, right. he's puppeting the otter like it's real. Maybe, maybe right? you have and to ask the otter And it's freaking me out. Directly. It's looking right at me. It fucking looked at whoever was talking, and it's... All right. I guess I missed something, but <laughs> there's a fucking puppet otter, and it's real. <laughs> the puppet is real. The otter is real. Oh, yeah. I mean, where does oh, one end and the now, other begins? Now, here's some real yeah, Watchmen I mean, shit going is, it, <laughs> is the otter extension of Kevin, or has Kevin always been this otter? <laughs> you know what I mean? I feel like you guys passed around some pot at some point, and I just <laughs> missed it. <laughs> passed around the pot? Is that what you just said? <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Old man Salvin really <laughs> knows his stuff. The internet is my thing. There's no <laughs> drugs on the internet, dude. So I don't know anything about You that. guys and your reefer, I'm not understanding what's happening. <laughs> You're wacky tobacco. <laughs> the devil's lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lettuce is very meaningful in Watchmen. It is. Yes. Ooh. All right, we're going to move on to our next section, which is trivia. And for that, we're going to turn it over to Pete LePage. All right, this is the part 
We give back to you, the lovely audience. It's an opportunity to win 25 free dollars in the form of a gift card to Midtown Comics. Because if you had 25 bucks, you go to a comic book shop. Who would like 25 free dollars? A simple raising of the hand. A simple raising of the hand for maybe somebody who hasn't won. Yes, you, sir. New guy. All Come right. on down. Thanks. Appreciate your bravery. Uh, sir, what is your name? My name is Colin. Colin, audience, audience, Colin. All right, Colin, I'm going to read you a question, listen to all three possible answers, get all three questions right, $25 yours. Uh, today's stream is on topical comic news. Okay. okay, here we go. Question number one, Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips are teaming up again for a new project called Blank. Is it A, Pulp, B, Criminal 2, Secret of the Ooze, or is it Carrie Russell? So it's either A, Pulp, which is the only one that makes sense. I, I have to go with A, yeah. A is correct. Woo! I'm excited to find out. It's a uh, Western. takes place in the 30s. Should be interesting. Here we go. Question number two. Valiant Comics has a new villain, which is a giant brain and is also an evil scientist called Blank. Is it A, Bad Brains? B, Dr. Toilet, pronounced Toilet. <laughs> or is it C, Terrence Howard? So it's either A, don't pick it, or it's B, amazingly. B, B Dr. Toilet. I'm going to pick up this comic just for Dr. Toilet. I don't know about anybody else. All right, question number three, last one, focus up. Two members of the Marvel's upcoming dysfunctional uh, X Classified team has been announced. Psylocke and Blank. Is it A Havoc, B Beast, or C Freddie Highmore? <laughs> so it's either A. Yeah. A. Or you could. Yes, nice job, sir. 25 free dollars are yours. Congratulations. All right. Great trivia, Pete. Good thing there's no sub trivia game going on here. Or is there? No, there is. Uh, yeah. So Pete always likes to do a sub-trivia game in the third answers of his questions. They always tie into uh, comedians who left us too soon, mm -hmm. which is the main reason we actually started this show <laughs> uh, 13 years ago or so. I saw Pete come into the lobby with a Midtown Comics bag. I was like, hey, you like comedy, right? Mm -hmm. What do you think about comedians that have left the world too soon? And I'm like, well, Alex, I'm glad you asked because... Uh, when comics leave us too soon, there is an empty and hole to there. to be clear, we're talking about comics as in comedians. Go on. Yep, yep. And uh, I feel like there's a hole there, and I think maybe we could provide a show and build around comics as a disguise for this love of comedians. Yeah, and then I was like, great, let's do that. We'll do a weekly comic book talk show. Mm -hmm. About mm -hmm. 10 years in, you start doing this weird fucking bit <laughs> in your trivia section, and we'll kind of go and see what's going on. Yeah, your there. math is way off. I mean, this <laughs> only just started a couple months ago, but uh, all right. Okay, great, great. I'm glad this uh, horrific point in my life has only been a couple of months. Uh, so what are the, what are the third answers Man, if this is the horrific point in your life, you've lived a bl blessed life, sir. I'm on the internet, man. It's all golden. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wholesome place. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> Nothing bad ever happens on the internet. Oh, boy. Nice look out to the audience on that, Thank buddy. You. Thank you for calling it out. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, Carrie Russell, Terrence Howard, and Freddie Highmore. Do you know it? Uh, Kevin, or should we ask, ask the otter? Don't. He's, he's not saying anything uh, because it's just a real otter. <laughs> August Rush? You are correct, wow. sir. August Rush. The Amazing. Robin Williams wow. classic, August Rush. It's just nice to sit and reflect on August Rush for a moment. Yeah. So, Sometimes thanks, you got to be like, hey, you remember August yeah. Rush? What's your, just real quick, what's your mm -hmm. favorite scene in August Rush? Um, I would have to say it's Robin Williams' soul patch. Was that on the poster or something? No, no. He has like this, because he plays like a rocker. Oh, okay. So he rocks his soul patch. It's all right. pretty funny. All right, you got me there, buddy. Uh, as we all know, tomorrow is new comic book day. We recommend you go to Midtown Comics because they've been nice enough to sponsor the show. Mm -hmm. Pete, what are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward to Ghosted in L.A. number six and Die number ten. Ooh, good yeah. picks. Anything you want to say about either of them? Uh, they're just really great stories, and uh, I'm really impressed with the writing. Great. 
Uh, pick up those comics based on those recommendations, everybody. Sure. Sure. <laughs> oh, Zalps, did you want me to feed into your bullshit and then try to recap it and then you laugh at me and then correctly recap it? <laughs> I've, I'm starting to feel like Justin maybe provides some sort of animosity filter. <laughs> oh, yeah. like he there's a reason there's three hosts, man. <laughs> <laughs> He's just a pillow that soaks up all of the hatred. Yeah. And makes it palatable. Otherwise, uh, <laughs> Ghost in L.A. is uh, it's a fun book about almost exactly what it sounds like. Uh, there is a woman. She ends up living in an apartment complex with a bunch of ghosts. She solves some mysteries. She's dealing with dating in the real world at the same time. So it's like Melrose Place meets ghosts, I guess, is kind of how you'd say it. Uh, what was the other one? Die? Die number uh, 10. So this is by Karen Gillan. This is a fantastic book uh, about a bunch of kids who, as kids, got sucked into a Dag- Dungeons & Dragons-esque world, came out, some horrible things happened to them. We don't know what they were. And then decades later, they get sucked back in again. And what has grown to is from this initial premise, like very big budget movie style premise, it's become, as often happens with a lot of Kara Gillen's work in the best way, it's become about all of fiction and how it all ties together and all of these worlds of our imagination tied together. It's very cool. What are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward to The Punisher. (laughs) No, I'm looking it's not forward coming to, out. Don't be a douche. I know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm looking forward to X-Men number three is coming out for Marvel Comics. Oh, this yeah. This whole... If you love old people, check this out. All right. No spoilers, buddy. No spoilers. Okay. Uh, this, this, the whole X-Men line has been absolutely bonkers in the best way lately. Uh, and the X-Men book in particular is this strange, crazy mix between action movie dialogue and bizarre Jonathan Hickman ideas mm-hmm. as the team members of the X-Men led by Cyclops, go and investigate different things that are attacking this new mutant society. It's awesome. It's mind-blowing. It's weird. I love it. He's a shitty leader. Uh, well, no, actually, I think he's a very good leader. Nope. Uh, so that's coming out. Rachel, plug your stuff. And the, there was also a comic you wanted to plug, right? right? So there's a comic I'm excited about. A friend of mine has their number one of James Bond coming out tomorrow. And oh, nice. I appreciate yeah. the synchronicity of pop culture that there's also going to be the new trailer for No Time to Die. Yeah, tomorrow. No Time Left to Die. No Time Left to Die. Which is a ludicrous title. It's a ludicrous way. title. It's also ludicrous that it's... Yeah. The, have you seen that the font is exactly the same font as the love boat? Hell yeah. Yes. It yes. Is. It's yes. bizarre. It's the, the exact same boat. font. So yeah. that's weird. Mm-hmm. But the whole movie's weird. I'm, I mean, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it too. Phoebe Waller Bridge wrote it. Phoebe Waller Bridge wrote awesome. it. Uh, Rami Malek is the villain. Yeah. It's uh, what's his name? Uh, Kari Fukunaga, <gasps> who directed yeah. True Detective. Yes. Yeah. Tying it all back together. Oh, Ooh. my gosh. Ooh. Yes, absolutely. So, so yeah, so that's exciting. And also Wednesday, there are a couple of new Serial Box episodes coming out. Uh, two of our serials. One is called Gods and Lies, which is really cool. Um, it's about a woman who is the human agent for the goddess of justice. Ooh. And someone was murdered. And it's set in modern day. So it's humans and gods living among themselves. Uh, living together and uh, so someone was murdered in the goddess of justice's temple and so the human agent has to team up with the demigod and solve it and so that's really cool so I think the the third episode will be out tomorrow Wednesday's new episodes and uh, also we have a series called Happy Hour with Homer which is a modern retelling of the Iliad that's based on this woman's um, live performances that were done in a bar in Montreal so it's basically like drunk history with Homer but with modern interpretation interpretation of the prose, and it's really fun. Wow. So those are new episodes to look forward to in Serial Box tomorrow. Cool. And as mentioned earlier, Thor Metal Gods comes out next Thursday. Thursday, December 12th. All right, there we go. Yeah. Uh, so definitely check that out. A couple of things we want to plug before we go. As mentioned, patreon.com slash comic book club. If you want to join us on our Patreon Slack or for a monthly movie night or any of those sort of things, it's as low as two bucks a month, uh, and we really appreciate the support because this show does cost us a little bit of money to do, even if it is free to listen to and free to come to. Also, we mentioned the Watchmen podcast. That is Sunday nights after the show, as well as Thursdays for a bonus episodes, uh, sometimes with special guests.
Ross, I believe, will have one this week as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, weighing in on the show and everything happening around it. Uh, so that's cool and fun. Also, we have Riverdale After Dark, our Riverdale podcast, which is every Wednesday after that show. So check that out. Pete, what else do you want to plug? Friend us on Facebook so you get to know about the amazing guests we have on our show. You can check us out on Twitter at Comic Book Live, Comic Book Club Live dot com for this podcast and more. You can subscribe and comment, and please do comment because those help us out quite a bit on iTunes, Android, Spotify, Stitcher, or the app of your choice. A couple of people we want to thank before we go. We want to thank Rachel for being on the Woo-hoo! show. Thanks for having me. Booth Bad Prime. Oh, hey. We wanted to prog- uh, David. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Uh, just before we go, uh, real quick, there was supposed to be another guest tonight, David Gallagher. Uh, he did get a little sick, and he's been feeling under the weather. He has a GoFundMe page you can check out, so search his name. He's been a good friend to the show over yeah. the years, so definitely go. Amazing creator. He's done a lot of great stuff. Uh, please check out his GoFundMe, unfortunately. Yeah, David Gallagher on GoFundMe. Definitely check that out. Yep. Uh, last, folks, we want to thank is a you folks. Thanks so much for being here. We were every Tuesday night at 8 p.m., totally free. Please tell your friends good night. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming out. We appreciate it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Once a week, that blows your mind.